Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Happy halloween -y. So I went trick-or-treating, and I want to show you what I got. And you should try my neighborhood. It's a really good neighborhood. This is what I got. Actually, I went to the uh, gem show, and they stole all my money. And I'm going to be filing a claim about it. But uh, at least I have something to show for my work. Anyway, what we're doing in this video today is talking about what's on my desk and what I'm working on now, or will be working on as this pile indicates I have to make something to get rid of all this money that's laying here. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the desk. It's not neat because I'm in the middle of working on these pieces and I thought I'd show you the mental agony that goes on in creating. So this is what the desk, this part of the desk looks like. I have another one that I'm working on too. And on this desk is probably 25 projects. Um, what, hello, what we're going to talk about briefly is um, the couple things that are on the desk and the inspirations for these pieces and where I am in the stages. So um, we're going to go down to this one over here. So one of the things I'm working on right now is a piece um, that I'm making from a design in the Treasury of Ironwork. Um, I really like these because they remind me of wire, and they are. <laughs> Big iron, mine are small. Um, and so m one of the problems that I had to f figure out was how to make this fit as a necklace. Um, originally the design was more straight across, so I pulled up, changed the image in Photoshop, and pulled these up a little to make more of a natural uh, U-shape. And then these elements here, these little flowers and the thistle um, and the leaves, I decided to make out of metal clay. Um, so in order to do that, I first had to make uh, slightly larger pieces out of polymer clay and then molded them with the Bellicone two-part uh, silicone rubber molding compound and then would push the uh, metal clay into them I'll unmold. I let them dry overnight. And these have to be cleaned up yet, sanded, fired, um, and then they'll shrink and then those elements will get soldered on to here. And this obviously all gets soldered together. I still have to put the square cross pieces in and figure out how I'm going to hang it. This is the uh, drawing that I pulled, that I did, um, you know, like here I'm just trying to figure out do I want to hang it like that? Am I going to hook, put the uh, jump ring into this curl here? design decisions that I'm going to make down the road. Um, I'm going to also set a faceted teardrop in the center here and add a flower on top with another faceted stone and may or may not do little like two three millimeter stones in those flowers. Also want to incorporate some gold beads uh, in this piece too. So this is an example of taking someone else's drawings, changing it like this was a fence, you know, a wrought iron fence. So I don't think that anyone's done the jewelry aspect of this yet and I'm also changing the design so that's one of the things I'm working on this is a slow go here so another piece I'm working on concurrently with the other wire piece is um, from a piece of uh, seaweed that I found dried on the beach and I saw it and I thought it looked like a necklace I love the salt crystals on the outside and um, you know the very organic shape of it which is very uh, you know in many ways different completely different from what I'm working on in the other one but I take my inspiration where I can get it kiddies so anyway I did up a drawing of what I want the necklace to look like I still haven't resolved the clasp issue at this point so that is a question mark um, but I decided to make um, these pods not as squished as these are, but a fuller shape. Um, so I decided to use my hydraulic press and I cut these pieces out of the plexiglass um, to put in the press and the metal gets squished up through the plastic when you're when you're doing the using the hydraulic press. And then I went in and did chasing a repose to round out the shapes even further. Um, you'll see notes on this. Um, the two halves have to go together, so you need them to match pretty dang well. And when I put these two together, I had some issues of fit. So I mark um, on the outside and the inside 
th this shape needs to be punched out more and this needs to be moved over and things like that so and I keep adjusting them until I get a really tight fit on the pod so this is kind of these are done they just need to have their surface treatments but essentially it's this concept where these little pods are going to be coming off of a steel wire and uh, these are in progress. I always file these edges really flat so that the edges will solder together nicely. Um, sometimes they don't work and they keep going back to the drawing board until they fit. So this is a long project here. Um, I believe this is going to be steel wire and I, for the salt, um, I'm experimenting right now, um, just in the beginning of experimentation. This is a um, two-part thing called epoxy clay, and I, and I was like, oh my god, what am I going to use for the salt? I, I could use enamel um, and then do like a sugar fire on it, but I wanted something really sparkly. So I found this ground German glass online, which I thought would be perfect because it could be put in a kiln. And if I could get it just enough so the enamel to hold it, and this doesn't melt, I might be okay. I don't know. I haven't done the enamel part yet. I'm experimenting with epoxies right now. Um, like this one here. This I set up last night. Um, the color is not what I want for the background, so I haven't figured out how to get the right color on that epoxy clay. This one I'm probably going to um, use polymer clay, liquid polymer clay, and color it and then stick the um, the glass onto the surface and put it into the into the toaster oven and and hope it holds <laughs> holds on to it. So I kind of put it to test, you know, rub it on my clothes and how much stuff's coming off. Like this is not perfect. I'm still getting runoff. So there's a lot of experimentation involved in this to try to figure out how to use this German glass. I have about four other products I'm going to try working with it. So I'm really excited about this piece. I really like it. And I can't wait to get moving on it because it's been taking a long time forming these shapes and getting them right. So I will we'll go on to the next exciting adventure in Nancy's studio. So the other project that's on my desk is um, derived from this fabulous ceramic piece that I saw in, I think it was Craft Marin Craft Magazine. And unfortunately, I don't have the artist's name on me. I'll put it under the information on the video. Um, and I, what I liked about this is how you have a really kind of sweet looking baby that's just really kind of scary and off. And I thought, well, that would make, instead of doing a, setting a cabochon stone, what about making a stone that looks like this haunting baby kind of thing? So I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it, but I'm playing with it right now. And I went to the antique store and found these kind of little creepy little guys here. I even have his girlfriend. So I like the little faces. So what I did was I once again made molds out of polymer clay of their faces. And here are the oh gosh, here are the little molds. And then I pressed more polymer clay into them um, and kind of carved and shaped the faces a little bit more to change them. These right now have a coat of um, acrylic gesso on them that I need to sand up and do another coat. They're kind of gloppy, but. I want to work and see if I see if I can get this really beautiful coloration and the haunted kind of look to them. And I thought, you know, it might it might work. I might have you know a little interesting stone that I would set down under glass or something, some way protect it so that the colors didn't wear off. So that's another project that I'm working on, um, and I will find some more that I'm working on because there are many things going on in this desk at one time, which is why it looks like this. As you all know, I am a little schizophrenic, so my work is also schizophrenic. Um, I've got this thing for um, uh, gothic uh, style jewelry right now, as well as my nature-based one. So um, I found this cross. I don't know where I got it from. It's from Jerusalem, and it's silver. And I like the shape of this a lot, so I'm going to probably change it up for what I need. But it just made me think, wow, this would be really cool to hang off of a really long chain. And then I thought about the chain. I thought, well, I should make a chain to go with it. And um, so I made these little, this was the concept drawing here. This is basically a cross. And then um, either, you know, forge or purchase chain to go with it. So I made these little, they're almost like buttons where the chain will hook off 
the backs of them like that down the piece. Um, so once again, this is still in development. That's why I made them in copper. I'm kind of going to make the finals in silver um, and just been playing around with chain and chain ideas. Um, on the same gothic theme, I want to make um, a boxed setting for a ring. Um, and right now what I'm doing is finding shapes that will fit just right on it. This is too small. It's the Goldilocks principle, you know, I have to have it just right so I'll back set this and it'll be a raised box and I want to do some filigree or some something yet yeah, I haven't quite figured it out, carved or etched or, or pierced uh, over the top and the sides of it with some light coming through. So that's another ring design that's in the works. Um, this is another one. I made this a long time ago, maybe maybe 10 years ago and um, I like the ring it's just a little too massive here and there's some really bad construction going on here so what I'm going to do is try to recreate this and remove some of the problems uh, areas and so that I'm working on not a lot but it's in the background and this was another piece that I want to do um, as a ring and I don't know where that's going at all and then this is another one <laughs> working on that I want to make a gigantic diamond ring on. And that is sitting there. Speaking of rings, we've got this one is another concept in the works here. I bought all those um, quartz points at the gem show. So I want to play around with doing that. Then we have these fabulous ah, crystals that I saw when I saw them. I thought ring right away because I just can't resist a massive cocktail ring. Especially this one. Oh, baby. Somebody messes with me and they get a black eye. And then I made these. Um, this is, uh, what the heck is this stuff? It is a two-part plastic thingy. And I embedded, um, uh, what's that stuff? That hanging mo oak moss or whatever it is into it. And I thought this would make a cool ring too. But I have no idea where to go with it. Sometimes I'll sit here and just kind of put all the different pieces together to see how they work. Oh, what about that? No. So I do, you know, designing in a bunch of different ways, you know, like this one, I just like this shape. And um, so I etched some metal and made them uh, plastic, you know, cut out like I did for the seaweed necklace and ran it through my press. And now I'm chasing a representing the shape a little more pronounced. But I don't know what this is going to be. And it may you know it may just turn out to sit in the junk box and rot away and get a beautiful patina on it or not i don't know i mean i've got this bracelet this a woven bracelet that i want to squish stuff through but i don't know what to squish so what i do is i get started on an idea and a lot of times it doesn't ever get realized i get either lose steam with it or lose the inspiration or find something better to play with so um it's all about experimentation and to end on that note Thing is heavy with this on here. I want to talk about another thing that I do, kind of like with trying to figure out how to get that glass to stick on to the the epoxy, the epoxy clay. Um, I also test products out because I want to see if I want to use them. Right now, I'm going to be doing a test on a product called Everbright for preserving um, the finish on um, metal or shiny metal, like. What I'm going to do here is I've got a really highly polished surface. This is a fire uh, uh, patina on copper. And then I've got a brass that's, well, kind of shiny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this Everbright over these pieces. And I'm also going to do three other pieces with another spray-on acrylic lacquer. And then I'm going to use the Everbright. And I'm going to throw them all in the tumbler. I'm going to engrave on the back, which it has which product is on it. And then I'm going to run it through the tumbler and see what's the wear look like. And then I'm going to hit it with sandpaper. And I want to test which one's going to hold up the most because one of the product problems with lacquering is that you can end up, you know, having it wear off and then you're in trouble because you got to take it off the whole piece. So I want to test this stuff. And I do this a lot, do a lot of testing, a lot of experimenting. And it's always amazing when something actually gets made. So <laughs> this is my desk. This is what I'm doing right now. Six months from now, it'll be something different, but that's the excitement of being a, a jeweler. So, thanks for coming. Sorry it's such an odd video. You didn't, I don't know if you learned anything, but uh, a couple people asked me what was going on here in my desk, on my desk, so I thought I'd share. So, thank you for coming. Come again. 
and we'll see you next time. Ciao!